Hello friends, welcome back to the design uh, video series on design of steel structural elements. In this video, we will see how to find the design axial load capacity of a column, uh, which is a built up column, right? Built up column is the one wherein we have used some standard shapes to make one column. Now here we have used an ISMB 400 along with two plates, that is two flange plates uh, of uh, 300 by 20 mm. And uh, now I need to find actually the what is the design load capacity of uh, design actual load capacity of this uh, column as a whole in the first example we have seen how to find out for a, a single uh, column that is I section and here we'll see how to find out for a built up column now the problem description is determine the load carrying capacity of the column section shown in the figure below if its actual length is 4.5 meter its one end may be assumed fixed and the other end hinged right so this last sentence is given uh, to find uh, to get the value of K now I will, uh, as usual, I will write the formula to find the design uh, actual load capacity, which is given as PD is equal to FCD into A, right? So this is the formula to find the design actual load capacity. Now, in this case, AE is actually the effective cross section area of this column which is the effective cross section area of ISMB 400 which is almost around which is uh, 7846 7846 is the cross section of the ISMB 400 plus okay two plates are also there two plates of uh, 300 by 20 so this whole thing comes out to be uh, okay I'll just uh, let me check yeah 19846 19846 millimeter square one nine eight four six millimeter square is the total cross section area right now to find FCD uh, I already told you you need first thing as the buckling class right so here we can't usually assess the buckling class directly so we need to actually find few terms uh, those terms are okay just give me a minute uh, right okay now here also we can find the buckling class very di uh, directly because you can see here if I come down right uh, that is the table which gives actually the buckling class you can see here welded I sections that is built up column sections built up sections right they actually fall under uh, buckling class uh, which is given as here yeah, here here it is there. so built up member where we are using two standard shapes to make one member so this is actually the built up member these are actually not called the built up members right uh, uh, here actually we are using plates uh, uh, to form a eye section but uh, nowhere we have used a road section but here we are using a road section and a plate to form a column section so that type of members are called the built up members so all the built up members fall under buckling class C so they fall under buckling class C right now we know which buckling class it falls next uh, thing I I want to find that is KL by R right so to find K he has given that one end is fixed and the other end is hinged so for that purpose uh, IS 800 gives this table right okay here it comes one end is fixed and the other end is hinged K is equal to 0.8 so it is point eight times the length of the column which is 4500 this divided by r minimum okay so point eight times 4500 comes out to be 3600 right now next i uh, will find the value of r minimum so i have told you to find r minimum you actually r minimum is given as minimum moment of inertia divided by the total cross section area now minimum moment of inertia is actually minimum of okay i xx and i yy 
divided by the area now as per my intuition uh, i think i y y will be the minimum moment of inertia but let's ju just check out what will happen right so now uh, first i will find i x x first i will find i x x so i will once again use the parallel axis theorem so here uh, there are i will take three sections here right so i will take this as plate as one this holds i section as two and this plate as three right so three terms will come here so i will try to write those things so first is the plate uh, which is in a rectangular fashion so it is bd cube by 12 so b will be 300 because 300 is the dimension which is parallel to the axis uh, that is xx axis on which i am finding moment of inertia so it is 300 b d cube by 12 plus area is 300 into 20 b into d okay this multiplied by d so d will be actually distance of cg of this plate 1 up to the main cg right so this distance is how much so this is 400 plus 20 plus 20 it is 440 means this will be 220 right 220 minus 10 which is 210 this is for the plate so what I will do here is I will multiply this by 2 because two plates are involved that because uh, this for the third plate also same term will come so this plus now for the I section I will go so for I section uh, I need to find the moment of inertia of I section about its own centroidal axis uh, that is coming out to be 20458.4 20458.4 into 10 raised to 4 IG plus area is 7846 multiplied by D actually will be 0 because CG of this I section lies on XX axis itself so there is no distance between the CG of this I section and the XX axis so it will be 0 so I can find IXX on this whole column which is coming out to be Seven double three seven eight four triple zero. Seven double three seven eight four triple zero millimeter raised to four. So this is I X X. So similarly, I will find I Y Y. So I will take plate first. Now for the plate B will be twenty because twenty is the dimension which will be parallel to y y axis 20 into 300 cube divided by 12 now you can see here the cg of the plate lies on y y axis itself so there is no distance between the cg of the plate and y y axis so that d square term will be 0 if that term becomes 0 so this term will also be 0 so this i am multiplying by 2 by because two plates are there so i y y of i section i y y of i section is 622.1 622.1 into 10 raised to 4 right plus now here also the I CG of I section lies on YY axis itself so there is no term right so this IYY I'm getting out to be 9622100 9622100 millimeter square right so I told you as per my in intuition so I uh yy i'm getting lesser than ixx right so to find uh, uh, this uh, r minimum i need to substitute that so it is nine six double one double two one triple zero which is ninety six point two two into ten is to six ninety six point two two into 10 raised to 6 this whole thing divided by the area uh, total area is coming out to be 19846 so r minimum i think i'm getting something around okay, i'll just write total so it is uh, 0.8 times uh, 4500 is 3600 
so R minimum I am getting 69.63 So for KL by R I am getting 51.7 So for 51.7 the value of FCD as per table 9C is something around 180.45 Newton per mm square so I can easily find the value of PD is 180.45 multiplied by the total area which is 19846 so therefore PD is equal to 3581.2 kilometer So this is how we can find the design actual load capacity of a built up column. So here also I am stressing more on the fact that you should be very much comfortable in finding uh, IXX and IYY so which is the important thing in these kind of problems because based on this only we calculate because other than this there are there is nothing much complicated uh, thing so all are direct substitutions. I hope you understood. We'll see a few more examples in the next videos. Till then, thank you. Bye.